the system of equations We must deal with them all at once Always looking for solutions Positive outlook Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This video is for students in linear algebra who are going through eigenvectors and eigenvalues for the first time. You've probably just finished watching an introductory video to eigenvectors and eigenvalues and a video about some basic properties of eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Now we're going to dip our toes into what's called an Eigen space. This is going to be incredibly similar to null spaces and column spaces and row spaces from the past. It's just a new kind of space defined for eigenvalues and eigenvectors, well, specifically eigenvectors. The Eigen space of a matrix A corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda is the null space of equation 512. Now, let me just write down that equation. So there's equation 5.1.2, it's the homogeneous equation, but instead of the matrix A, you have the matrix A minus lambda I, where I is the ident identity matrix. So the eigenspace of a matrix A corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda is the null space of this totally different matrix. Notice A is in it, but this is actually not finding the null space of A. And it's considered to be the eigenspace of A associated with the eigenvalue lambda. Now we will actually do an example of finding the eigenspace associated with a given lambda in a few moments. But before we do, I want to introduce a theorem. And the theorem that I'm introducing here is just like every other space theorem that we've dealt with. The null space, the column space, row space. It is just saying that this is a subspace. So the eigenspace of A corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda is a subspace of Rn, and it consists of all the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda. Now there's something slightly word-wise incorrect here, and the reason why I changed the wording from consists of all the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda to contains all the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda is because subspaces must contain the zero vector. And remember, an eigenvector cannot be the zero vector. So this space will contain all the eigenvectors, but it will also contain the zero vector. So it contains all the eigenvectors associated with lambda, and then on top of that, the zero vector. To prove that this is a subspace of Rn, we just have to show closure under vector addition and scalar multiplication. So I'll start with a very simple statement. Let u and v be vectors in the eigenspace of A corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda and let c be a scalar. Then u and v are in the null space of this homogeneous equation right here. This is the equation that all of this kind of centers around. A minus lambda i times x equals zero. Remember, the eigenspace is just the null space of that equation, that homogeneous equation. And the null space is a set of all solutions to that homogeneous equation. Obviously, one solution to that homogeneous equation is the trivial solution. So let's assume that u and v are non-zero. Because u and v are in the null space of this matrix, a minus lambda i, that means that u and v satisfy this equation. Well, let's take a look at a scalar multiple of u plus v. This is just a matrix right here. And this summation is just a sum of vectors. And we know how to do right distribution. We also know that the scalar here can be moved out in front of this product. However, remember, u and v are in the null space of the matrix A minus lambda i. That is, u and v are in the eigenspace of A. Therefore, a minus lambda i times u is zero, and a minus lambda i times v is also zero, and this summation will be the zero vector. Hence, 
the scalar multiple of u plus this vector v is also in the eigenspace of a that is the eigenspace of a is closed under vector addition and scalar multiplication Thus, the eigenspace is a subspace, and we do need to kind of figure out a subspace of what. Well, the vectors in our eigenspace are n-dimensional vectors because they're multiplying a square n by n matrix. So these form a subspace of our n. And that actually proves it. The eigenspace of A corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda is a subspace of our n. Now I did not continue with it and say that it contains all of the vectors corresponding to lambda. If u is an eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda, then a times u is equal to lambda times u, which implies a u minus lambda u is equal to zero, which implies a minus lambda i times the vector u is equal to the vector zero, which tells me and you and everybody that the vector u is in the null space of this matrix, a minus lambda i, or in other words, u is in the eigenspace of the matrix a. And that is corresponding to lambda. So there we go, we actually did finish out the proof. I was gonna skip it, but whatever. It's that quick to finish out. And as I mentioned, despite zero not being an eigenvector, it is actually still in the eigenspace of every single matrix. And that's because the trivial solution will solve any homogeneous equation. That's not really gonna get in our way, so don't worry too much about that. We're gonna finish out this video with an example here. We're gonna state the eigenspace of this matrix associated with the eigenvalue negative four. Now remember, the eigenspace is the subspace of R cubed in this case, which is the set of all solutions to the homogeneous equation a minus lambda i x is equal to zero. In general, to find the eigenspace associated with lambda, we're gonna solve this homogeneous equation. In this case, they told us let lambda equal negative four, so that's what we're gonna do, but this is all you need to do, and we've done it several times actually with this matrix, so I'll do it kind of quickly. So essentially we took a subtracted off lambda times i, which just basically means subtract lambda from each of the main diagonal elements. Our lambda in this case was negative four. So subtracting a negative four means add four to all the main diagonal elements. We get to this right here. Build your augmented matrix, use row reduction, and write the parametric vector form for the solution of this homogeneous equation. So the eigenspace associated with lambda equals negative four for this matrix A is the span of this single vector right here. And remember, the span of a vector is a subspace. And this should really work well mentally for you because in a previous video I said, Hey, if X is your eigenvector, then any scalar multiple of that X is also going to be an eigenvector associated with that lambda. So here we have an eigenvector associated with lambda equals negative four. Well, two times this is also an eigenvector associated with lambda equals negative four, and so is negative five pi times this. There are an infinite number of scalar multiples of this eigenvector associated with the eigenvalue, negative four, for the given matrix. But that's how you would find the eigenspace associated with the matrix and its eigenvalue. And I think that does it for this video. Again, baby steps through this topic. I hope I see you in the next video. Have a great day. Be a wonderful human being. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions Positive outlook overcomes Obstacles getting in our way comes Effects more than we can sometimes see Things for what they are And work together until you feel at peace Listen close Don't talk too much That isn't kosher You may really hurt inside It doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry
don't 